first graders, this is art lesson three, artists paint the circus. Today's lesson will introduce you to the circus, including different circus performers and animals, and also why artists choose to paint the circus. We will review the work of famous artists focused on the circus, and we will also do our own directive artwork depicting a favorite circus performer. Let's get started. So what is the circus? For those who have never been or may have never heard of a circus before, a circus is a special kind of entertainment that can both be enjoyed by children and adults alike. Circuses are a group of performers that may include acrobats, clowns, trained animals, trapeze acts, musicians, hoopers, tightrope walkers, jugglers, and other artists who perform stunts. We'll go over some of the basic history of the circus. The basic idea of the circus dates all the way back to the Roman Empire. However, the modern day circus was first introduced to America in 1768 by a man named Philip Astley, who is known as the father of the modern day circus. The first full production circus was held in Philadelphia on April 3rd, 1793. Canvas circular circus tents were introduced in 1825 in order to have the ability for shows to be formed daily and reach more audiences. In 1872 is when the rail cars were introduced to transport circuses from town to town. In 1829, the circus began introducing trained animal acts. Jumbo the elephant was the first elephant brought to the U.S. to be part of the Branham and London show. In 1907, the Ringley brothers and Barnum and Bailey joined together to create the greatest show on earth, combining both of their circus acts to be called the Big Show. And in 1956 was the last tented show, and the big show has since performed in indoor arenas, which is where you would see it today. Here are some circus performers pictured here that show various performances and acts. As you can see, there was quite a variety of different forms of entertainment. You can see clown acts, acrobats, bike stuntmen, tightrope walkers, and silk performers, men being flung from human cannons, fire acts, and jugglers, just to name a few. Along with human acts, there were also trained animal acts that performed stunts and brought unique entertainment. Here you can see a bear riding a scooter, tigers jumping through hoops of flames, elephants and hippos standing on their hind legs, stunt horses, dog acts, and a ringmaster carrying a grown lion. Over the years, many animal acts have been retired due to the unnatural lifestyle the circus provides. At times, they didn't necessarily always provide the proper conditions. Therefore, there aren't as many animal acts if you went to the circus today. But historically, you will see many animals depicted in circus artwork. So why do artists paint the circus? If you've ever been to the circus or seen one on TV, it's easy to see why artists would enjoy telling us about the circus. It's filled with color and action. It's noisy with laughter, music, and applause. You can smell popcorn and cotton candy. And there are rows and rows filled with people and spectators. Now we'll be moving on to feature a few famous artists and their depiction of the circus. Poster January 18th to February 12th by Ben Shahan, 1898 to 1969. 
This artist used a huge circus clown standing on the back of a horse for his poster design. This poster was an advertisement of a circus and you can see the date on it. What is he wearing? Do you see an animal in the picture? He did not paint the horse that he is standing on because he wanted the clown to stand out. The artist always thought of himself as an American even though he was born in Lithuania, which is now a part of Russia. His father was a wood carver and carpenter and he moved to New York when he was only eight years old. He grew up in a poor area of the city and he worked very hard by going to high school and college at night while he worked during the day. Bareback Riders by W.H. Brown, 1886. In this portrait, two bareback riders are balanced carefully on the back of this galloping horse. Their knees are bent and the woman is standing with one foot on the man's knee. Their arms are spread to help them balance. What do you think of their costumes? Do you see a clown and the ringmaster? Is the background we see the audience? They are very light in color and not as detailed as the performers because they are far away. W.H. Brown was a 19th century American artist. We don't know too many facts about him, but he painted the things around him that he saw and he was a self-taught artist. Circus by George Seurat, 1859 to 1891. We are inside the circus tent in this painting. There is a bareback rider on the white horse. Do you think the rider will fall off? What is the ringmaster doing? What is the clown doing? Notice the grainy look that the surface of the painting has. If you look closely, you can see that Seurat applied the colors with tiny dots. He placed many dots of several colors close together. When we look at them from a distance, our eyes mix the colors. Seurat was born in Paris and started drawing when he was just seven years old. When he was 15, he attended school. He always made drawings and careful plans before he started painting. Seurat never got to finish his painting because he died at the age of 32 from a throat infection. He had a good friend and artist named Paul Signac who finished the painting for him. Circus by Max Pechstein, 1881 to 1955. In the first photo, how many bareback riders do you see? How many horses are there? Notice the position of the two performers and the way the horses are swiftly galloping to the right around the red curve of the circus ring. The man and woman are both wearing red and this helps attract our attention immediately. In the second photo, the artist captures the circular formation and motion of the circus tent and performance ring as the zebras are shown running around the camels. In both pictures, the artist uses the contrasting red and black eye-catching colors. However, notice in the first photo, the audience appears much more distant, and in the second photo, they look much more closer up. At the Circus Fernando Ringmaster, Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec, 1864-1901. This is an oil on canvas painting that depicts a woman riding a pale horse under the watchful eye of the ringmaster. Lautrec lived in Paris and was a frequenter at the circus and created many pencil drawings of the entertaining scenes that unfolded before him. In this photo, notice the dominant stance of the ringmaster as he commands the direction of the horse. Notice the clothes that both the ringmaster and the horseback rider are wearing. Their appearance are reflective of the time period and circus performance attire. The Circus, Louise Melier, 1960s. Melier was an artist from Switzerland who was noted as a painter and a stained glass designer. One of his most famous artworks was this one, The Circus. The paintings used muted bold colors and geometric shapes to show what happens to a circus performer, including a clown, monkey, and a parrot behind the scenes at the circus, almost as if they are getting ready to perform. 
Now that we've discussed the history of the circus and why artists choose to paint the circus, and we've gone over several famous examples, we're going to give it a try ourselves. Today we're going to do a directed draw of a circus clown. Materials that you will need for today's art project include a piece of white paper, a pencil with an eraser, crayons including a color black, and a ruler or some sort of straight edge. Go ahead and gather your materials and we'll get started. Step one, we're going to divide our paper. So using your pencil and your ruler, you're going to very lightly draw and divide your paper into four different separate sections. You can go ahead and um, either measure or just kind of use your eye to measure the middle point of your paper on the top and you're going to draw a vertical line all the way down and then you're going to do the same from side to side. Um, you should end up with four equal rectangles and this is going to help us draw so that we are drawing what we need to in each section. Step two, we will draw first the hat. We want to use our ruler to make straight lines. Uh, the shape of the hat is almost like two rectangles stacked on top of one another with the bottom one being skinnier and longer. You'll want to place the hat near the top of your paper with the majority of it placed in the upper, the upper left section. I tilted mine here, but you can draw yours how you wish. Step three, next we're going to draw the face shape. It should be an oval shape that starts and finishes at each corner of the hat. It should be large enough to span all four sections of your paper. Step four, next we're going to draw a wavy line for the collar. You'll want to start at the lower section of one side of your face shape and end at the other. I wanted a really thick bell collar, so I brought my line down a little bit before I started doing the curve to create that. I also drew a line on each side of the collar down to the edge of the paper in order to create um, uh, shoulders and a shirt underneath the collar. Step five, next we're gonna draw the eyes. Notice the almond shape I chose. Again, I slanted mine so it appears that my clown's head is tilted in the, to the side, but you can draw yours how you wish. Um, once you draw the, the outside of the eye shape, you'll wanna draw two lines within each eye to create the pupil. Also, you'll want to make sure to position your eyes lower on your face because we'll add to them coming up. Step six, we're gonna draw um, and add on to those eyes to create the clown's makeup. So here you'll do just that. You'll wanna draw lines going from one corner of your eye to the other, and you'll wanna bring them up and curve them almost to make like a curved rectangular shape. Now we'll go ahead and draw your clown a smile or a frown if you'd like. This is your art piece and I have seen sad clowns too. Either way, you'll wanna make sure to space it out enough below the eyes in order to keep room for your clown nose. Step eight, now draw a line around your smile or frown to create large lips for your clown. And also go ahead and draw a good sized circle in between your eyes and lips to create your classic clown nose. Step nine, crazy hair. Next, we'll work on the hair. Clowns usually have really big curly hairdos. For this, starting at the corners of the hat, you'll want to draw three humps on each side of your face and also ending with a smaller fourth hump to create the clown's ears. The last thing we're gonna draw is a hat flower. So in step 10, for this, I want you to draw a curved line coming from your hat, and at the end of the line, draw a small circle encompassed by four or however many uh, semicircles or humps you want to call them to create the flower petals. Now that our drawing is done in pencil, you'll want to go ahead and go back with your eraser and erase those original quadrant lines that we drew, the four rectangles. Um, don't erase your clown, but if you see those lines anywhere in the open spaces, go ahead and um, 
erase those. Step 11, um, so we're not quite done yet. In order to bring a clown to life, you're gonna go ahead and take your black crayon and trace over all your pencil lines that you drew your clown with. And now the fun part, we're gonna color our clown. You can color your clown however you like. Clowns usually have white makeup, so I left the face and the ears blank on my clown and then I colored in the details with bold colors. Uh, clowns usually have orange hued hair and a red nose and lips but again you can choose to color yours how you wish. Also as you can see on this slide I decided to um, create a background. I drew red and white stripes to represent a circus tent. You can do the same or you can do something different or you can leave it blank if you wish. Um, other than that, great job guys. You guys are done. Um, remember to sign your artwork and take a photo and upload it to Seesaw for your teacher to see. And last but not least, find a really awesome place to hang it up and proudly display your artwork. Thanks for joining me today at the circus.